Hey there, everybody. Uh, my name is Dave Sullivan with Sabic here at the Battery Show in Stuttgart. Hello, good morning. My name is Stefan Weber from the uh, Sabic Automotive team in Europe, and I'm located in Germany here in Stuttgart. And uh, yeah, we are happy to be here, and we had a lot of interesting discussions with our customers, be it battery uh, suppliers, be it uh, tier ones or OEMs. We had like discussions all about the battery pack and the requirements of the materials and uh, here you see the uh, ID4 battery pack mock-up that we have established a prototype for a base of discussion and uh, yeah this was very interesting for us to interact with our customers and uh, from that perspective it has been so far a very successful show here and um, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, develop further our materials for the requirement uh, to, to fulfill the requirements that we receive from our customers, and we are really po positively looking into the future to to uh, bring our materials into this electric vehicle battery pack space and uh, being uh, looking forward with our customers to a successful future going forward. So let's uh, let's. Let's show them what we're uh, what we're what we're talking about sure. here. So, what we did in the U.S., uh, we worked with an automotive benchmarking firm, and um, we we purchased a Volkswagen ID. Four, and then we took that battery pack out. We did a full cost analysis, uh, broke the vehicle, broke the whole battery pack down, went through the weight, the cost, and it's a very it's all aluminum. And um, what we plan to do is to design a battery pack from plastic using you know some of our polypropylene materials and take this whole entire battery pack and make it out of plastic now it sounds like a big task but um, we have drawn up this we have this concept here that we've come up with with some ideas that we had from a, a brainstorm session with some tier one suppliers and other industry experts at this benchmarking firm came up with some ideas and then in 2022 we plan to uh, bring this to life in a plastic form we'll cut some tools but this is this is really the future of, of where we see electrification going in terms of light weighting in terms of um, fire safety um, go yeah, ahead, Stefan. And, uh, yeah let me also just explain some functional uh, topics that we can uh, highlight here from this prototype design and illustration model so we have Cooling, more, uh, cooling channels directly integrated into the plastic bottom tray using our materials and we can therefore efficiently you, you know, use the, 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 the design to cool the, the modules and the overall pack. Yeah, so, so this, this module would actually be fitted directly on top of the cooling channels and then we would seal and, adhe and adhere these modules directly on the cooling channels. So, a more efficient design yeah. without having to use an aluminum, exactly. a brazed aluminum cold plate. Less parts, more efficiency, exactly. and lightweight. That yep. is our goal, which, which we want to achieve, right? And uh, other uh, other functional items which we can highlight here are, you know, this large part manufacturing is also something we are looking at, and we are uh, looking at technologies that enable us uh, uh, injection molding these large parts at a common or usual machine size so that uh, our customers are really able to produce this in an industrial way with high volumes and uh, low costs. So that is another approach mm -hmm. we are taking. So let's talk a little bit about the materials that are used today and the materials that we're proposing. Yes. So if you look at a battery pack today, it's, you know, as you saw on the ID4, it was it's made from aluminum. Um, and aluminum, when it's subjected to the temperatures um, of 1100 degrees C, which is about the temperature of, of a fire inside of a battery pack, it, it melts a hole right through in, in just a few seconds. Um, so we've developed a polypropylene, a flame retardant polypropylene called Staymax um, that is, so this, let's take a look at this plaque here. Um, this is a four millimeter thick plaque um, subjected uh, to 1100 degrees C, uh, it's 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, for five minutes uh, with a torch. Um, as you can see, this did not burn a hole through it. And 
it's very strong. It's, re, it's retained its integrity. Um, and Stefan's got a, a we, what we decided to show here was once you start to integrate a little bit of geometry into this, um, it can even start to keep the uh, heat from spreading to the other pieces. And if you flip that over, Stefan. Sure. I mean, it's even the... the it's the also the very important that, you know, on the other side, on the yep. flame opposite side, you have a temperature lower than 200 degrees, whereas the flame has a temperature of, of 1100 degrees. Yes. So you can really see that this is a very uh, still structural performing part. And uh, yeah, so in, in our in our testing, as uh, Stefan said, this side after five minutes was less than 200 degrees C. Um, so what is that? Why is that important? That's that's important because um, if you had a cell on the other side of this, or a vehicle, uh, the cabin, you would keep that, that fire from spreading uh, due to high temperatures. Right. So it's, it's extremely important to, to uh, insulate the fire in, in, on one side. And when, you, when we take away the flame, after the five minutes test, you know, the, the flame distinguishes out of itself directly when we yeah. take away the flame. So that what's, is also a very good performance. And what's really interesting is you can see this foam that's um, developed here. We call this an intumescent char. Uh, it's basically a skin that has formed to protect itself from the fire. And we are able to modify these materials based on our customers' needs, based on the requirements we receive. So this is a very uh, positive result from, for us. Just wanted to talk a little bit about the first part in production with our materials. Um, this is from the new Honda CRV plug-in hybrid in China. Uh, this went into production in February 2021. Um, it's uh, uh, made from a polypropylene short glass, 30% short glass. Um, with flame retardant. Yes, and uh, it is really a huge, impressive part. It has a size of 1.6 meter in length and width is 1.0 meter. And um, we have certain properties and uh, performance that uh, we could realize with this uh, part here. One is the structural performance and mechanical stiffness. The low wall pitch, when you look at this part here, is really very flat and uh, which helps us uh, to, to uh, provide a proper assembly to the bottom tray in this uh, example here. And uh, we have overmolded colors all around the, the, uh, the outer border of the part. And we have um, uh, threaded inserts which, which are integrated here on the overall surface. And, um, yeah, maybe David, you can talk a little bit more about the regulations. That sure, yeah, and so this part um, helps Honda meet a new regulation that started in January 2021 in China. Um, so in the event of a fire or thermal runaway in a battery pack, the government now requires that uh, you give the occupants five minutes from the start of that fire to exit the vehicle safely. This cover with its flame retardant properties allows Honda to meet that new regulation. So, um, you know, our, our partners at Sanko Gosai who molded this part are, uh, you know, they, they're very uh, important in, in being able to, to bring this part to life in a very quick, short amount of time. Um, but it's, you can see that this part helps Honda keep their image of being, building a very safe vehicle for people in China. Another aspect we are looking at here is also the manufacturability of these large parts. So we are, produced, we are able to produce this part here at a reasonable machine size and even bigger parts for pure electric vehicles. We can manufacture with uh, providing technologies, simulation tools, so that these parts are too, uh, produce injection moldable in uh, available uh, machine size and uh, that we do not have to invest in too much uh, machine costs uh, from that perspective. So let's talk a little bit about the materials that will make all of this possible. Um, Staymax is our long glass polypropylene with and for the battery pack products 
we have integrated flame retardant properties into the pellet. Um, so this is this is a 30% glass um, pellet, uh, and we just kind of show you a little bit about what these look like. Um, it's polypropylene that is over glass. It's almost like spaghetti covered with polypropylene. So what that does is because the flame retardant is in the pellet, in the polypropylene, you get uniform flame retardant properties throughout the entire part once it's molded. Yeah, and let me maybe describe a bit more the, uh, the performance and the requirements that we can fulfill with this material. So it brings this, the mechanical and structural stiffness into these large parts and it's therefore ideal to, uh, to, to, to be used uh, for, for these outer enclosures of the battery pack or also inside the pack for the module housings, for example, where we also have other materials, but this is our, let's say, first choice for a discussion to, to, to bring this material inside exactly. this space. And this, is, and this is what helped bring that strength that you saw in those burned plaques that we showed you earlier. This, this glass is what brings that strength, so it's very, very important to the formula. Exactly, and uh, combined with the flame retardants performance, so we think this is really an ideal material to start with and we are able to modify the, perf the, the performance uh, based, on our, uh, based on our customers' needs and their requirements. We just want to say uh, thank you for joining us today to learn a little bit more about what we're doing in the electrification space. Yes, thank you for listening and we are looking to further cooperate with our customers and having a successful future. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>